Hi, I'm Kit Fanner, professional photographer and videographer, and it's a pleasure to be working with Tina here today shooting her video, Posing Like a Pro. Hi, I'm Tina Chisnell. I'm a portrait photographer based in Hamburg. Our aim is to help you to look fabulous in your photographs. So whether you have a professional photo shoot coming up or you just want some nice photographs to share on your Instagram, we can help you to pose like a pro. But first, we're going to go through some golden rules. So, rule number one is whatever is closest to camera is going to appear large and whatever is far away from camera is going to appear small. So I want you to think about a pencil and if I bring that pencil right up towards the camera, it's going to appear large. And if I take that same pencil and walk across the room and hold it there, it's going to appear small. So you need to think about that when you're posing your body too. Rule number two. Whatever is pointing straight out towards camera is going to appear cut off and short. So think about that pencil again. And if I hold that pencil horizontally towards you, it's going to appear short. It's going to actually be quite difficult to determine the length of that pencil. Whereas if I bring it out to the side a bit, you're going to be able to see the length of that pencil and it won't appear so short. Rule number three is to think about your silhouette. So whenever you're having a photograph taken, think about the image that you're trying to project to your audience and then think about whether your silhouette matches that image. So are you trying to re look relaxed or confident or strong, masculine or feminine? And does your silhouette tell that same story? Rule number four is to avoid straight lines right angles and symmetry in your poses. Now this isn't a hard and fast rule and it's not set in stone and it's something that occasionally I will break but what I would avoid is to use all three of those things in one pose. So now that we've got that out of the way we can start posing. We're going to start by posing our feet. Whenever I'm posing a model I always start with the feet because the feet are the foundation and if you don't get that right, the rest of the pose probably won't follow. So I'm going to start with my feet about hip width apart. I'm going to put all my um, weight into one leg. I'm going to put it into my right leg here. And then what that's done is um, it's allowed more movement in my hip. So now I can pop this hip out, which has introduced a nice curve in my hip and my waist here. And what it's also done is gotten rid of that straight line. And it's also um, created some asymmetry between my, in my right hip point and my left hip point. So my right hip point is high and my left hip point is low. So that's your base pose. And from there, we have some options. So option number one is I can put my left foot here in front of my right foot. So it's not in the same plane and it's facing about 45 degrees off to the side. So my feet aren't facing the same direction either. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to um, introduce a nice soft bend in that knee um, and that makes it look far more relaxed. So I've got some curves and I've got some straight lines and some symmetry. So that's option number one. Option number two is we're going to start with our feet hip width apart again. We're going to put all our weight into our right leg and then we're going to bring our left foot and bring the toes in line with the arch of my right foot here. And then I'm going to bring my left knee and bring it over so it's in front of my right knee. So what that's done is it's introduced a nice narrow point over here. So the viewer's eye is going to start at a narrow point, it's going to come down, come over this curve over here and then end at a nice narrow point. So this is a nice silhouette, it's a nice curvy silhouette, very feminine. And then we have option number three which is very similar, but instead of having our um, feet um, touching over here, we're just going to bring that leg over um, so that the um, ankles are crossed at, at the feet. So now what you've still got, you've still got that nice narrow point of the knee, so you've still got that feminine and curvy pose, and nice silhouette, but it just looks a bit more casual and less modelly. And so then we've got pose number four, option number four, so this one is a bit more dynamic. So what I do is I ask the uh, model to take a step towards me. And this sounds simple, and it is, but what they tend to do is do this, and they take a step like this. And it looks very flat-footed and very rigid and uncomfortable and just doesn't look very natural. So what I ask them to do is actually take a step forward and um, to um, transfer their weight to their front foot. And so their toe on their back foot is still on the ground and the heel is lifted and we've got a soft bend in that knee, so no straight lines there. It's got a soft bend. That looks far more dynamic. 
And then what I ask them to do is then rock from back to front, transferring their weight. And what then will happen is the hips start to move. And so when they reach the front here, I ask them to freeze and to pop that hip out so you get that curve again. Knees are nice and bent over here and you've got pose number three. So that is feet. Our next video, we'll be focusing on our hips. Now we're going to think about posing our hips. Now with our hips, you have a few decisions to make and this just depends on the look that you're after. So if you would like um, your hips and your waist and your bottom to look smaller, then what you could do is turn away from camera a little bit, so 45 degrees away from camera, and then pop uh, most of your weight into your right foot or the foot that's furthest away from camera and then pop that hip out. Now what that's done is it's made this area further away from camera. And so if you remember our rule, whatever is further away from camera is going to appear smaller. And what you can do to emphasise that is to lean forward so that your shoulder and your face is closer to camera. So now my eyes and my mouth and this area is going to look slightly bigger and there'll be more focus on my face rather than this area. If you would like more emphasis to be placed in your bottom and your hips and your waist and you'd like them to appear bigger, you just do the opposite. So you put most of your weight in, your, in the foot that's closest to camera and pop that hip out. So now what that's done is made this area closer to camera and it's going to appear bigger. So that's your hips and our next video is going to be hands and arms. Now we're going to talk about your hands and arms. Now hands are a dead giveaway to looking nervous and tense. So I always ask models to be careful that they're not clenching or gripping or clawing with their hands. So we're going to go through a few options of what to do with your hands. And option number one is the old favourite, put your hands on your hips. Except I don't ask my models to put their hands on their hips, I ask them to put their hands on their waist. And the reason why is because your waist tends to be smaller than your hips. So by putting your hands on your waist, you're actually accentuating that nice narrow point and accentuating those curves. So that's option number one. It's a nice, strong, powerful pose and quite an edgy pose. So I'd ask them to have a facial expression that's quite serious and edgy. Option number two is very similar. So we're just going to have one hand on the waist. And what I would ask them to do is put the hand on the waist where the hip, on the side where the hip is popping out and then also drop that shoulder. So now what you've got on this side is a high hip point and a low shoulder point. And with the other hand, I'd ask them to run their hand through their hair, like this. Um, but what you want to be careful of is that you've not got your elbow coming out pointing towards camera. Because remember, whatever is pointing out towards camera is going to appear shorter and kind of cut off. So if you just move your arm to the side a little bit, you can then see the length of that arm. It makes a little bit more sense. Another thing to be careful of is not to show the palm of your hand when you're running your fingers through your hair like this. So you want to show this area here, so this is more elegant, it's got more of a slender line. So you run your hands through your hair, avoiding the palm showing facing camera. So with this shoulder, this shoulder is going to be high and this hip point is going to be low. So we've got, it's called a counter pose. We've got high hip point, low shoulder, and high shoulder, low hip point. That's option number two. Option number three is with both arms folded. Now, this is an easy pose, but quite tricky in, in some areas, just because you wanna make sure you're not actually um, very tightly folded, because when you, if you um, fold your arms really tightly, you actually squash the um, flesh on one arm. So if you can see my arm, I've actually squashed the flesh and it makes it look broader and wider. So you just have to have very soft hands and what I ask models to do is just to um, wiggle their fingers on their arm like this and then lay them very gently on their arm. And I'd ask them to put three of their fingers together like that and the index finger slightly apart. It just makes it look a bit more relaxed and less stiff and awkward. And that's pose number three. And then option number four is similar but with just one arm folded. So one arm across the body and with the other hand, you can have it on your face or on your collarbone. Being careful with your hand placement that you don't want to um, obstruct your jawline here 
or your neckline, which are both considered um, very attractive and flattering to see those lines. So if you've got your hand on your face here, I would make sure you turned your face just slightly so that your jawline and your neck is still exposed to camera. You also want to be careful with your hands because again, you don't want to show the palm of your hand. You want to show this elegant and slim line of your hand here. Um, and if you've got nice nails, it's fine to also show your nails or some jewellery and to stroke your chin or your jaw like this. Being careful not to um, push onto your skin too hard. You don't even have to push very hard for you to form dimples. So I always say to clients to pretend they're stroking a baby because you tend to be softer babies. <laughs> and so stroking your cheek like this um, and again, having three fingers together and one slightly apart. Another option is to have both hands around the navel area and both fingers touching like this. So again, so just pretend you're holding something small like a piece of Lego or an acorn and holding your fingers around your belly button, but making sure that your elbows aren't coming into your body because what you're doing there is you're actually widening the trunk of your body. So you want to have some negative space between your, your elbow joint here and your waist on both sides so you can see those curves and you can see where your body ends. And that's option five. And those are your hands and your arm tips. And next, we'll be moving on to your head. Now we're gonna think about our head and our face. And we're gonna think about where we're going to look. So we have a few options again. Option number one is to look directly straight at camera. Now, whereas I do actually use this with my models, I do sometimes find it can look a little bit like a mug shot or a passport picture. So I always have other options to fall back on. And option number two would be to face slightly off to one side. So I'm gonna turn my head just ever so slightly so you lose sight of one ear. And then I'm gonna still face camera. Option number three is to go further away from camera. So I'm gonna look, carry on looking off camera and so that you, you can still see my nose within the line of my cheek. So you don't want your nose to be poking out of the side of your face. And this time, I'm not gonna look at camera because if I look at camera, you'll see a lot of the whites of my eye, which is not very attractive. So I'm gonna look away from camera and either smile, pretending there's somebody there, or have some kind of thoughtful pose. And then option number four is to carry on moving so that I've got just my side profile. So which side? So everyone has got a good side of their face. So I've talked about side profile, I've talked about moving your head and it's just knowing which side is your best side. Now research shows that most people's best side is their left side. But if you're not sure, take lots of photographs, have a look on your Instagram. And which pictures do you tend to think are better pictures of you? And is there, is there a link? Does there seem to be the ones that are your favourite, they seem to be um, more that show more of your left side or your right side. Another thing to do is to study those photographs or look in the mirror and see um, different features of your face. So look at your eyes and is there one eye that's slightly more lifted than the other? If there is, that side may be the better side of your face. Also look at your eyebrows. And with the best will in the world, if you're plucking your eyebrows, they're not going to be identical. So. Which eyebrow do you seem to prefer? I prefer my left. Um, and then also you can look at your brow bone and see if there's one that's more defined. And the, the one that's more defined is probably your better side. Again, your mouth. If there's one side of your mouth that seems to be lifted a bit more than the other, that would be your better side. And your jawline. Is there a difference in your jawline? Is there one that's a bit more defined, a bit more lifted? Failing all of that, you still can't can't decide and you have a perfectly symmetrical face, lucky you, then, then look at your parting. Do you have a parting that's on one side? So my parting is on my left, which means that there's more um, hair on my right side that's um, forming a shadow from that curtain of hair. So there'll be more um, skin, more face exposed on my left side. So I would probably focus more on my left side. So when I'm turning my face, I would turn to the right. And that is your face. If you've got any questions, just drop me a line and I'll be happy to help. I hope to see you soon.